It looks like I still have a job. Not sure how long this will last. On second thoughts, probably when he gets himself cancelled again. Here he comes holding a pint like his life depended on it. The man who made the town of Dudley famous overnight. The cult leader himself, Tyen Booth, also known as Mr. I'm going to walk out of the ring mid-fight because I was pissed off. Let's see what he has to say for himself. Who do you want me to look at? You or the camera? I told you last time, always look at me, not the bloody camera. Now concentrate. We need to let the fans know what the bleeding hell this series is about. Wait, let's wait for her to get all this shit. Stop staring at the waitress. Let's concentrate on the job in hand. How are you, Tyen? Oh, good, man. Not bad. Dudley didn't go to plan, did it? You were supposed to win the fight, enjoy the black country, then set off on this journey to find the purpose of life. Uh, yes and no. Depends what the plan was, you know what I mean? Uh, I kind of knew how it would go. I knew I wasn't... I knew I was full of alcohol, you know what I mean? I knew my lungs would be tight, you know, from all the little spliffs here and there and that. It's, if I can't do it in my 20s, I'm not going to be able to do it at this age, you know what I mean? So, but we just, it's all about this branching out, innit? It's all about this branching out, man. Pushing yourself, you know, seeing how, seeing how far you can go. You told me you stopped drinking alcohol for a week. Why didn't that work? It didn't really come together, you know what I mean? So I had to throw a few elbows, a few knees in there, a few little racist insults, you know, to the black opponent. But For fuck's sake, that was never part of the script. You screwed up at the first hurdle. Just stop drinking for two minutes and answer my questions. Whatever, is worth it. Did you know Dudley is famous for the Industrial Revolution, as well as you walking out of the ring in the midst of a fight? I already knew it was a shithole, to be honest with you. I already knew it was a dump. Um, but I don't know, it's one of them things, isn't it? I, I'm not really bothered. I got off the couch, like I said, and went to a different city. Okay, so did you take anything positive from that infamous night? The best thing about Dudley, yeah, was being in bed, you know, in the travel lodge, watching Home Alone. Have you ever watched Home Alone? I'm not here to talk about children's movies. You know that little Macaulay Culkin in Home Alone? He was cute, wasn't he? You what? In fact, just stop. Please, stop. Well, you know, now he's fucked up, you know, because of all the drugs. He was about 10 in Home Alone, now he's like 40. He looks messed up, so, you know, that's what alcohol can do for you. You must be just as fucked up as Macaulay Culkin as well, then. Nah, he was like a child star. You know, he made it at 10 years old, so... We need to move on. No, that was the highlight, being in bed watching Home Alone, you know, in the travel lodge. I loved it. I didn't want to get out of bed, you know what I mean, and go to the fight, a little cold venue in some shithole in fucking Dudley. But like I say, sometimes you have to get out of your comfort zone and you getting out of bed in the travel lodge, turning off home alone halfway through, you know, when it was getting good. It's one of them things, man, sacrifice. Yes, you walking away from the comforts of the travel lodge, watching home alone to fight another man, may just go down as one of man's biggest sacrifices in Dudley's history. Now let's stop this nonsense and talk business. The cult, as well as your new legion of fans have voted to send you on this journey of self-discovery. The producers have decided to send you to Dublin, Ireland, the birthplace of your mentor, Brendan Ingle. You need to explore the Irish culture and see what you can learn from the people across the pond. How does that sound? No, but you mentioned like Brendan, and I do really want to like find out like what this, almost the secret was, you know, to his sort of discipline. Because he didn't drink, he didn't smoke, he didn't gamble, he didn't fornicate. Like I said before, me and him used to go to saunas. Not sex saunas, just normal saunas. Here he goes again. And we sat there and he'd be telling me about Naz and Johnny Nelson, you know, all these legends that he's trained and produced. And then a woman would walk in, you know, in a little swimsuit into the sauna. And Brendan would get up and leave. You know, having that kind of discipline, like... You're a religious man, yeah? And you know these religious books, they say, lower your gaze. Don't covet another man's wife. You know what I mean? So, Brendan just got up and left. That's exactly why you need to go to Dublin. 
Go and learn why Brendan Ingle had the values to lower his gaze and walk away. Maybe one day you could lower your gaze. No, no, no. <laughs> Go on, carry on. You know, when I was just talking, a bit of spit came out. Came out. Can you edit that? Then again, there's more chance of peace in the Middle East than you changing your ways. That's why I want to go and meet like Brendan's family, you know, in Dublin, you know, his brothers. Because like, you know, his family tree, yeah? You know, Brendan and his wife, they were, they were together. Brendan set up the gym, you know, created like great fighters, made a load of money from boxing, from training fighters, you know, like Nas, Johnny, Kelbrook, all them guys. And you don't even need to be a boxing fan to like, appreciate that kind of story, you know, setting up a gym and making a load of cash. Because then he passed that on to his sons. And they don't drink, they don't smoke, they don't gamble. You know what I mean? They got loads of properties, you know, that they rent out to like different people. And they live comfortably, you know, off that passive income. And now they're kids, you know they're kids. They're on the ball, aren't they? They're 17 years old going on 40. So it's kind of passed down, you know what I mean? That money, that, that fucking knowledge. That I, I was raised around people who are financially dumb. You know, people who are just fucking like broke you know work living paycheck to paycheck you know never owning like property outright that they rent out to people you know and live off passive income comfortably they're in debt like 50-year mortgages working in shit jobs that they hate you know to pay off mortgages like i say living paycheck to paycheck do you know what i mean having kids with these deadbeat men who are gamblers drunks broke broke men with no careers you know what i mean on benefits my dad was like in and out of prison, you know, for selling weed, getting kicked out of his council house, getting put on tag, you know, that kind of bullshit. So I'd like to see the other side here yeah, and see, see like what made Brendan like how he was and made him the success that he was. You know, as far as like producing great fighters from nothing. You see these little boxing trainers now, they take on fighters when they're already established and then they might win a little title and then that trainer gets a load of praise praise but they were already good boxers you know like Lee Wood I used to train with Lee Wood in Nottingham and Sheffield and he was brilliant but when he moved he kind of stepped up you know and became a multi-millionaire hang on a minute so your point is Lee Wood went to a little boxing trainer stepped up his game and then became a millionaire you lost me with that speech Shall we just wrap this up and fuck off to Dublin tie-in? Finish this drinking and get on the plane. The cult leader arrives at Manchester Airport. He immediately reminisces his romantic trip to Majorca. She might have been the one that got away. I went to Majorca, you know, the single mom. She paid for it. She had two kids, you know what I mean? So she was kind of desperate. Yeah, which woman pays for a man to go on holiday? One that's desperate, Tyan. I don't want to sound harsh, but it's just fucking true, innit? You don't want to get to that point in life, you know, where you're just desperate, you know, where you're paying for a man to go on holiday. Said a man who loves to hang around in the red light district every now and again. Nah. <laughs> nah, man. Don't try and put that in my head. Nah, it's cool, man. Tyan was instructed to pre-plan an experience in Dublin which would teach him more about the Irish culture. I know I've kind of lined up something already for Dublin. Looking forward to that. Nice, nice little, little encounter. You know, a nice little Dublin woman. She used to train at the gym. You know, the Ingle gym. But yeah, I don't know. When you think of Dublin, you think of like Conor McGregor, don't you? What else? Remember your mentor. What was his name again? Mm. Oh, Brendan Ingle, yeah, of course. Yeah, man. Kind of associate him with Sheffield, but yeah, this is where he's from, Dublin. So hopefully he'll meet up with his brother, you know, some of his relatives, you know, see where he got that fucking discipline from. Because it, it was a strange kind of discipline, you know what I mean? You know, when I came to the airport with Brendan, yeah, we went to Lanzarote, you know, in my fifth fight. And I was fucking about with my phone, you know, in the airport when we were sat down. And he said to me, just like, just look at people. Observations, man, observations. After sharing some Brendan Ingle wisdom, the cult leader finds himself at the airport check-in counter, clearly Hello. not aware of the carry-on luggage rules, which may have changed since his little shit trip to Mallorca with his sugar mummy. Sure no no look at him. You can just tell he has a really important question on his mind. 
What, can I take shower gel in this bag, yeah? Shower gel and some spray, is that okay in this bag? Uh, is that, the shower gel, is that over 100 ml or under? If Don't over, know. you put it in here. Over 100 ml. Let's do the maths, Tyan. She said anything over 100 milliliters is not allowed. 225 mil. Yeah, so I have to put it in there, do I? Yeah. Lord help me. That one as well. Yo, let me just chuck it in here, yeah? Is that alright if I put it in here? Where should I put it anyway? No, you can't just put it anywhere. Now hurry the fuck up and stop thinking so much about this 250 mil bottle of shower gel. This one here, yeah? All right, thanks. All right. Thanks for that. Which way is it? As Tyan heads towards the security gates, he remembers the advice he was given about lowering his gaze. That, ladies and gents, are the eyes of a very fruity man who is a long way from lowering his gaze. I think I need to take another picture of this, you know. Which camera? Where's the camera? Yo, come on, man. I think I need to take another picture of that, you know. Let me get a close-up picture of that. Oh, shit. Try again. Yes. Just look at the smile on his face as it takes him 20 minutes to figure out how to scan his boarding pass what could possibly go wrong as Tyen Booth navigates his way through international borders, mixing with different cultures? How will Tyen Booth survive away from the comforts of his bedsit? That's a wrap for episode one. The second installment of this little shit series is out on New Year's Day. Remember to like and share the video, or else I will be out of work. Happy holidays until next time. Adios.